Okay, our recording has started. It is Tuesday, March 16th, 2021, 6 p.m. And this is the regularly scheduled city council meeting. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone. The first thing that we do um, each council meeting is the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm glad to welcome our youth city councilor, Josie Coulter here tonight. And she is gonna lead us in our pledge during the, that time, it would be appropriate to turn off your microphone um, and you can choose um, to also stop your video because we're going to focus on the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for doing that for us, Josie. I will now ask the city clerk to take roll. Barbara Bynum. Present. Doug Glassbell. Present. Roy Anderson. Present. Dave Bowman. Present. Dave Frank. Present. And Josie Col Coulter. Present. All of our city councilors and our youth council representative are present. Thank you very much. Um, next on our agenda tonight is the call for public comment. And this would be the portion of the meeting that if anyone in the public wishes to make comment on any item that is not on our agenda tonight, this would be the time to raise your hand if you are on our attendees list and we can allow you to speak. Um, we'll do the same thing for each agenda item. So if you have comments for an agenda item, I ask you to hold those until we get to that. I'm looking at our attendees list. And thank you if you're joining us for our meeting tonight. I do not see anyone raising their hand. So I will commence or not commence, I will skip all of the legal language that, that gets read if there is public comment. And we will move directly on to item five, which is approval of the council minutes from the March 2nd, 2021 special meeting and the March 2nd, 2021 regular city council meeting. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 2nd, 2021 special meeting and the March 2nd, 2021 regular council meeting according to the presented. I'll second that. Thank you. We've got a first and a second, so we'll do a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum. Aye. Doug Glassbell. Aye. Roy Anderson. Aye. Dave Bowman. Yes. Dave Frank. Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda tonight is item six. This is the Montrose Recreation District Comprehensive Master and Strategic Plan funding. And this is council consideration of a request from the Montrose Recreation District to partner on a comprehensive master and strategic plan and providing funding in the amount of $30,000. And I will turn this over to our community program manager, Kendall Kramer. Thank you, Mayor Bynum. Thank you, City Council. Before you this evening is a request from the Montrose Recreation District uh, to partner with them on the Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master and Strategic Plan. Uh, they are wanting to create a plan that will provide a roadmap for the next 10 years to ensure that our community, as well as the uh, not our community, including the city and the rec district has adequate facilities, uh, rec recreation facilities. Um, they are seeking our active involvement in this process in addition to a contribution of $30,000 towards this plan. Uh, they have already hired a consultant and look forward to starting this plan uh, right off the bat this month. Um, and it will be, they anticipate it to be complete by December of this year. Um, with that being said, I will um, take questions about it. Um, I, Mary Steinbach, the executive director, is also here tonight to answer any questions. Um, I should also say that this builds off of our past um, or our current efforts with shared services uh, that we have with the rec district. So I think it's a, a wonderful fit and uh, definitely a needed project for our community. Um, so I'll take any questions at this point. Thank you for that. And thank you um, to Mary Steinbach for 
coming to our council meeting tonight. Any comments or questions from our councilor members, including our youth counselor? I'm not seeing any. Um, we did talk about this item and the partnership at a work session. Um, based on our normal scheduling, that was probably two weeks plus one day ago. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. It's been uh, two weeks. So. Great. Um, I will um, accept public comment on this issue. Oh, Mr. Frank, did you have a question before we go to public comment? Yeah, just uh, for a clarification on that for the public, what is the overall cost of this survey? The overall cost is around $130,000. Thank you. Okay, um, we will entertain public comment. And so I'm going to our attendees list tonight and looking. Um, if you wish to make public comment, please raise your hand. And that button is at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if you wish to make public comment, we ask that you um, introduce yourself, your name and your address. I'd like to thank, I see some members of the Rec District Board attending tonight, thank you but I do not see anyone wishing to make public comment. So I will come back to council for a motion. Here I'll make a motion to approve $30,000 to partner with the Montrose Recreation District on a comprehensive master plan, master and strategic plan. Second it. <clears throat> Thank you, we have a first and a second. So we'll have a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum? Aye. Doug Glassbell? Aye. Roy Anderson? Aye. Dave Bowman? Yes. Dave Frank? Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda is item number seven, which is the Woodgate Road realignment. And this item is made up of two separate um, items that we will accept public comment on both and take a vote on both. But I will turn it over right now to our city engineer, Scott Murphy, for an overview of this Woodgate Road realignment. Scott. There we go. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so let me screen share, I'll show a couple of figures. So as we talk about this, um, we can point and wave our arms at things. Um, and then Lisa, could you bring in Doug Tuller? Um, he's the representative of the uh, landowner for this item also, um, when you get a chance. There he is. Thanks. Yeah, so that's Doug Tuller's joining us here. Can you hear us, Doug? I think so. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Awesome. Loud and clear. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So let me uh, just move some stuff around here, just a sec. Yeah, there's um, three items tonight on on the Woodgate realignment. These first two are focused on on the land side, and I'll be talking about those. Um, and then uh, the third agenda item um, after these two is is the zoning, um, and Amy from planning will present on that. Um, so uh, we talked about this at work session and then at the last council meeting for the first reading of a couple of ordinances. Um, so I won't go too deep into the details, um, but I would, for anybody that's just joining, um, I would uh, like to point you to our capital projects webpage, which is movemo.co. Um, that's where we have a, a page dedicated just to this project with a lot of the background information, drawings, um, uh, videos giving a lot of the history on the project and basis for how we ended up where we ended up things of that sort so um, please check that out and if you have any questions on that uh, feel free to contact me my contact information is on that page um, so the first two we're talking about tonight will be the right of way um, vacation ordinance um, i'll scroll down to the overall map here this is just the second reading um, what this does is uh, vacates what's going to become the obsolete portions of woodgate road which run down here um, and then at one point, they also had um, looked at running Woodgate Road, having it take a 90 degree turn, then go north right here. Um, through the design, we went away from that concept, which dated back to the early 2000s um, for various reasons, most of them tied to public impact 
uh, traffic flow and safety. Um, and so this piece of purple right of way here um, has become uh, unnecessary. Um, so as part of the land exchange, these are being vacated and then essentially realigned into the new road alignment here. So um, the first item does that formal vacation. Uh, the second item is the approval of the um, uh, plat, which is being done as an official act of the city um, in support of the capital project, which will replat the kind of outer project boundaries all owned by RDM JK Woodgate Investments. Um, and with that, they will dedicate the new Woodgate Road um, right away. So uh, I think that's kind of the core of the two items we'll be, or these first two here. I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you may have. Thank you. And I think I'll officially read what we're doing on this first one. Um, which is ordinance 2527. This is a second reading, and this is council consideration of an ordinance um, granting and authorizing the conveyance of an interest in city owned real estate pursuant to section 1 9 2 of the official code of the city of Montrose. And so that's what our first vote is going to be about. Are there any questions from council, including our youth counselor, for Mr. Murphy? Okay, before um, before we proceed any further, I'll see if any of our attendees tonight would like to make public comment on this agenda item. I do not see any, so I'll come back to council for a motion. Madam Mayor, I would move that we approve ordinance 2527 on second reading. I'll second that. Thank you for that first and second, and now we'll vote. Barbara Bynum? Aye. Doug Glassbell? Aye. Roy Anderson? Aye. Dave Bowman? Yes. Dave Frank? Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. The second piece of this Woodgate realignment is the RDMJK Woodgate Division of Property this is council consideration of the RDMJK Woodgate Division of Property, an official act of the city of Montrose. And um, are there any questions from council? Okay, and we also will accept public comment on this item. So I'll look to our attendees list to see if anyone has raised their hand. I'm not seeing anyone, so now we could accept a motion. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the RDMJK Woodgate Division of Property, an official act of the City of Montrose as presented. I'll second, second that. Thank you. We have a first by Mayor Pro Tem Glassbell and a second by Councillor Bowman. And we'll now do a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum? Aye. <coughs> Doug, <coughs> excuse me, Doug Glassbell? Aye. Roy Anderson? Aye. Dave Bowman? Yes. Dave Frank? Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. We now move on to the next piece, which is item number eight on our agenda tonight. And this is ordinance 2528. This is the second reading of an ordinance amending the zoned district designation of lot one of the RDM JK Woodgate property rezone map from B2 Highway Commercial District. R2, low density district, and R1B, small estate district, 2, B3, general commercial district, and lots 2 and 3 of the RDMJK Woodgate property rezone map from R2, low density district, and R1B, small estate district, to B2, highway commercial district. And I will turn it over to our senior planner, Amy Sharp. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That was a mouthful, I think. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with sharing my screen. You guys have seen this before, but um, as Scott mentioned, concurrent with the um, replat, we also need to do a rezone of the property. So here's the general location of the area. Everybody knows where this is at, but it's at Woodgate and um, East Oak Grove Road. Um, I won't go through all this because Scott kind of already talked about this too, just the project background. 
Um, this map shows what the current zoning is in this property area right now. So right now we have B3 general commercial district, B2 highway commercial district, R2 low density district over there in the lower right section of this property, the yellow and R1B small estate residential district kind of in the most Southern portion of the area. The reason request is to change this all to B3 and B2. So B3 would be on the Western side of Woodgate realignment and B2 would be on the Eastern side. This is the official um, Woodgate property rezone map. And um, basically this just allows for a consistent land use with um, some of the zoning of the surrounding area. And it kind of progresses as you move towards the existing residential areas to the east. This is our rezone criteria, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with by now. We've done several of these, but this is in your packet as well. And just talks about um, how official amendments to the official zoning map involving any change in the boundaries must adhere to um, these qualifications. So as I mentioned, the proposed rezone is for B2. This is highway commercial district. This is intended for businesses that are served towards serving the motoring public. And B3 is intended for a large variety of uses that could require large storage areas. Um, this is adjacent to properties that are zoned similar or the same, um, as you can see from that previous map. In our comprehensive plan, this area is listed as general commercial, which is the red, or residential mixed density low, which is the yellow portions. Um, as we've mentioned in the past, the future land use map does illustrate general and somewhat flexible locations and extents for various land use and densities, whereas the zoning ordinance is a detailed property specific and includes uses by rights that can be developed in that area. So the Planning Commission did recommend approval to rezone this as B2 and B3 at the February 10th meeting. It was a unanimous vote. Um, staff finds that the proposal does meet the rezone criteria stated in section 4429A of our code. It does meet the intent of the B2 and B3 districts. It is in compliance with the comprehensive plan and it's compatible and similar to the existing uses in the surrounding area and therefore staff is recommending approval of the rezone request. And that's all Thank you. Great, sure. thank you very much. Are there any questions before we go to public comment? Are there any questions from council um, about the rezone request? Okay, then I will look to our attendees list. It looks like there is a hand up on this item. Mr. David White. So if we could please allow Mr. White, yep, we've, we've got it so he can talk. Mr. White, if you would please introduce yourself with your name and address for the record. Yes, David White, 1823 Otter Pond Circle. Uh, just a quick question. Um, is the city acquiring or has the city acquired just the easement or all the property? And if it's all the property, are there plans just to sell the remainder of what's left after the road is built? I think Mr. Murphy is in the best position to answer that and go back to the map. He looks like he's getting it ready to pull up to answer that. Okay. Yeah, so I'll screen share here. The short answer is we're only acquiring um, the right of way. So, uh, it's kind of a land exchange of sorts in the name of realigning that right away. Let me pull up the map here. Let me just scroll down, but so if you guys can see that there. Um, so all of the uh, green property on this map is all owned by RDMJK uh, Woodgate Investments. Um, so with this, uh, the purple are going, uh, being vacated, uh, and then we'll deed over that uh, to them for ownership. Um, and then they are dedicating the right of way uh, with, for the right of way itself for the street. And then behind each road are utility easements for uh, power, communications, and gas, and those dry utilities. Um, and then we are also preserving utility easements. You can see kind of this nest of um, existing utilities over here. So we preserve easements for a lot of those with the lands. So they still own the land, um, but the, uh, the easements over those utilities uh, remain. 
Great, thank okay. you very much, Mr. Murphy, for clarifying that all that all that green stuff is not being bought or nor owned by the city of Montrose. And appreciate right. that clarification. Well, I appreciate you guys doing this. It's been many years in the making because that is an awful intersection. So um, but I, I'm looking forward to it, put it that way. So thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Any other public comments on this project tonight? I do not see any, so I'll come back to council. Um, we are looking at an ordinance on second reading, a motion for that. Madam Mayor, I will make a motion to adopt ordinance 2528 on second reading as presented. I'll second that. Thank you, we have a, a motion and a second. We'll now do a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum. Aye. Doug Glasspell. Aye. Roy Anderson. Aye. Dave Bowman. Yes. Dave Frank. Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. That takes us um, on to agenda item number nine, which is Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Bynum. Uh, this is Doug Toon. I'm going to oh. sign off, but I do want. I just want to take a second and thank you guys. For, uh, two two comments. This is the easiest thing I've done all week, which is really appreciated. And then second thing is, is uh, we're, we're going to close and have this all done on April 1st because Scott and I thought that was kind of appropriate. But, but other than that, I want to appreciate, I just want to say we really do appreciate all the, uh, the help. Your staff's been phenomenal and really, really uh, 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 remarkable. And we, we all appreciate it. So thank you again. Thank you very much. And thank you for interrupting me. I should have gone to you and asked for comments. Um, I really do appreciate you chiming in. We appreciate the work and the amount of work that this has taken between you and our um, our city staff, and they have done a great job. And it looks like this is a win-win. And as Mr. White said, this is a project that's been in discussion for a long time, and I'm excited that we are going to see it, it happen this year. It will help traffic, and we're always trying to create a safer and more efficient traffic flow for our community. Well, again, thank you. And, and, and again, you know, you, you, you got a good staff there. So thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And thanks for joining us. Okay. Now, agenda item nine, which is ordinance 2530 on first reading. This is an ordinance, um, council consideration of an ordinance that would vacating the three rights of way within the city of Montrose. Um, and I will turn this over to City Engineer Scott Murphy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So um, this is the same as what we talked about at uh, work session, but I'll share the map here just for anybody who's joining for the first time to give a quick overview. Um, so the, just one second here. The Stover property used to be owned by the city and leased to Stovers. Um, when they left, they exercised their right to uh, purchased the property, um, which when it was under city ownership, um, there was rights of way within there, but otherwise it was just all city property. So um, as far as public uses go for roads and utilities, it just kind of had blanket coverage. Um, now that it's sold, they're going through a minor subdivision process to create uh, three lots, one, two, three. Um, and then so within that, uh, as part of that process, we need to clean up all of the rights of way and utility easements uh, so that that can carry forward um, with with proper um, entitlements on the land. Um, so as part of that plat, you know, there's some right of way dedications to clean up the sidewalk along the towns in frontage, um, a little bit of strip of right of way on Oak Grove to try and get to proper width there, cleaning up some of these existing rights of way. Um, but through it all, uh, this back road that goes behind Stover's here and is shaded in blue kind of came into question. Um, there's, it was, used to be dedicated as a public right of way, but there's really no public need. Um, typically rights of way are public ways to, to carry, you know, generally roads, sometimes trails, um, uh, for the public benefit of multiple users and multiple lots. Um, in this case, it's really just a backage road um, behind the factory. So there's really no need to retain this as a public street. Um, so uh, they're looking to vacate this piece here. Um, they're also looking to vacate uh, a portion here uh, along what used to be the primary entrance off of Townsend. So I believe it was, I wasn't around, but 
as I understand it, they realigned the street to come over in the Encanto place when they did the Stover store redo. Um, I think that was in the early 2000s, late 90s, somewhere in there. Um, but they never, uh, but this obsolete right of way remained. Um, we're having them vacate only a portion of it. Um, so it kind of makes this lot more viable, but um, retains enough for a pedestrian walkway through here. Um, and so if pedestrians are coming down um, to this area, and we also had them reserve as an addition from some of the comments that came at work session, a, uh, a easement across here so that if we ever want to make pedestrian connectivity across here, that can remain. Um, so that'll that preserves a bit of right of way here to, to maintain those two um, connections. Um, and then we have this third piece of right of way that's you know, once this is squared up, um, kind of becomes obsolete also. So um, those are the three pieces to be vacated um, through ordinance. Um, this would be the first reading and then the second reading, um, if approved, would go um, at the following council meeting. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so that is private property with city streets going through it. And that is, those are rights of way that the city maintains for those city streets. And then there's some areas that we had a right of way that we don't need anymore. Is that? Exactly. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Just Hit it on the head. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions from council or our youth counselor tonight on vacating these rights of way? I don't see any. I also do not see any hands up in our public comment under our attendees. Um, we do need to hold a hearing officially when we vacate a right of way. So I will officially open the hearing and during the hearing is when we would hear any public comments. Still not seeing any, so I will officially close the hearing and um, come back to council for a motion on this first reading. Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to pass ordinance 2530 on first reading as presented. I'll second that. Thank you very much. We have a first and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum. Aye. Doug Glassbell. Aye. Roy Anderson. Aye. Dave Bowman. Yes. Dave Frank. We didn't hear Mr. Frank, Aye. but I, okay, thank you. Um, Mayor Biden, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Okay, next on our um, agenda is item 10, which is an ordinance 2531, first reading. And it is council consideration of an ordinance amending the zoning district designation of lot one of the Stover Minor subdivision property rezone map from P, public district, to I-1, light industrial district, and lots two and lot three of the Stover Minor subdivision property rezone map from P, public district, to B-2 highway commercial district. I will turn it over to senior planner, Amy Sharp. Thank you again, Madam Mayor and City Council. Um, if you guys, um, IT could bring in Matthew Harris for me. He's the applicant and would like to speak um, just for a few moments after I get done. Um, when I get done with my presentation as well, I'm going to turn it over to um, Stephen Alcorn first and then to the applicant. With that, I'll start with sharing my screen here. I think we're all familiar with where the location of the Stover property is, so I won't go into details about where that's at, as long as South Townsend. Um, this site is approximately 27 acres in size, and as the mayor mentioned, the request is to rezone from the P Public District to the I-1 Light Industrial District and the B-2 Highway Commercial District. So this is the proposed zoning map. As you can see on this map, we did not include the roads on the um, official property rezone map, but we will be administratively bringing in all of the roads and the right of ways um, with the adjacent zoning so it does not remain as a P public road. So our rezone criteria in section 4424, um, as I stated in a previous one, amendments to our official zoning map um, can only be allowed uh, on the following findings. 
The B2 Highway Commercial District is being proposed kind of at the area that's the closest to South Townsend. That's intended for um, businesses oriented to serving the motoring public. And then the I-1 Light Industrial District is intended to accommodate just a limited group of research, manufacturing uses, and a transportation hub. So the Stover property is adjacent to properties that are already zoned as I-1 Light Industrial District, B2 Highway Commercial District, there is some um, MHR, Manufactured Housing District, and R2 Low Density District to the north of this property. As I mentioned, the city will administratively um, bring in the internal and adjacent roads and right of ways into this rezone that are currently zoned public to match the adjacent property. So this property is listed as an employment center and general commercial area in our future land use map. So it fits in nicely with the um, future land use map and the proposed use. Staff finds that the proposal does meet our rezone criteria. It does meet the intent of the I-1 Light Industrial District and the B-2 Highway Commercial District. It is in compliance with our comprehensive plan and the future land use map. It is compatible with the existing uses in the surrounding area as shown by the adjacent zoning. The Planning Commission did recommend approval of this rezone request at the March 10th meeting and staff is recommending approval of the reason as well. And with that, I will turn it over to Stephen before we go to the applicant. Amy. You're on mute. I have one quick question. I think maybe Stephen's waiting for me. Um, in all the history of having a factory there, why was this never rezoned prior to this? And with a factory in place, why was it zoned as a, P, a public or P zoning? <laughs> I wonder if somebody else wants to speak to the history on this one. Maybe Stephen or Bill for me. Sure, right. sure. I'm happy to do so. Uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> the law requires any uh, property owned, or the code requires any property owned by the city to be zoned P. Uh, and we own the property even though that the property was being used for light industrial, uh, it by our code had to be zone P since the city owned it and leased it. Uh, so this is a weird uh, annex or uh, rezoning in that uh, we are going to give it the zone designation that it has been utilized for multiple decades, which is light industrial. Uh, Amy, are I don't know if Zoom allows me to talk and you to share a screen. I was Probably so. If you could share the screen that uh, shows council again the appropriate finding criteria. Yes. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. The. Yeah. There you go. The criteria. Um, so there's been some uh, questions. Uh, that arose in planning and we're also hearing them now, uh, questions that have gone to individual council members. If uh, as part or contingent uh, as part of this rezone, if uh, we can force the owner, which is Russell Stover's to do a, um, an environmental study. So these are the rezone criteria. This is what you're able to look at. Uh, we don't have any standing or justification to re, uh, to force a uh, rezone applicant to do an environmental study on their private property. Uh, so um, I think some emails went uh, went out or some phone calls went out. So I just wanted to make sure we uh, address that. Uh, these are the uh, the appropriate criteria uh, to consider. Thank you for that. Um, and I think before we go to council questions, Matthew Harris, you are the, the land owner. Um, and I understand you wish to say a few words. And you're currently muted. We don't need to see you, but we do need to hear you. There you go. Okay. Uh, are, are, are you, are, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, Madam Mayor? Absolutely. Thank you okay. for joining it's our probably, council meeting. Probably just, probably just probably as well that you're not seeing me anyway. So uh, this is Matt Harris. My address is 4711 uh, Clendenin Road in Nashville. So I uh, you know, greet every uh, one over, 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 in, over in Montrose from Nashville tonight. 
um, um, uh, counsel for the property owner, Russell Stover. Uh, I really don't have very much uh, to add uh, to what Mr. Alcorn and what uh, Ms. Sharp has, re has reported on. Uh, we at Russell Stover have uh, been working quite diligently for several months in coordination um, with Mr. Alcorn, with, uh, with Ms. Sharp, uh, with uh, with uh, Mr. Murphy and his staff in connection with the minor subdivision um, and feel like we've been uh, a very good partner with the city and really all the way around in, in what has gotten us to this point. I uh, would just really again point out that um, while we're here this, this evening is necessary uh, to position this property for the next stage of its life there, there in Montrose. Um, uh, the, the, the plant portion of the factory um, is, uh, is proposed for B1. That's, that's consistent with, with its past use. It's also is consistent with uh, its use going forward. Uh, no, no, excuse me, I, that's, that's, that's I1 instead of B1, the retail portion of the property is slotted for B2. Uh, that's also consistent with how it's been used in the past and is consistent with how it must be used going forward. So um, nothing new in terms of the permitted scope of use is, is, being, is being proposed. Um, these are, we would submit these are appropriate zoning, um, zoning designations for this property. Um, um, we, uh, again, would respectfully reiterate that all of the criteria for approval of this rezoning uh, have been fully met. Uh, we uh, would respectfully request the council to please approve this proposed ordinance. Uh, and we look forward to continuing to work with the city uh, to condition, to continue to uh, position this property uh, as I said, uh, for the next stage of its of its life, there in there in there in Montrose. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us at our council meeting tonight. We appreciate that. Additional, anything from um, council questions or comments, either for our planner, our attorney, or our, the landowner, Mr. Frank. For clarification, that you can't have P designation zoning on a privately owned parcel of land. Is that correct? That's correct. So we would have to rezone this either way since Russell Stover uh, invoked their option to purchase the land as was delegated in their original contract. So the minute that they bought the land, we have to rezone it, correct? Correct, correct. Thank you. Sure thing. Any other questions from council or comments from council? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone raise their hand. We did get an email from Mr. White um, at 5.30 today and that email will be entered in the record as well. Oh, I see a hand went up. Oh, Mr. White, okay. So if someone could unmute um, David White. David White, thank you. And um, I'll have you reintroduce yourself please for the public comment portion of this item, you know, hang on, technically this is a hearing um, because it's the first reading of an ordinance. So let me be really official, even though I don't have a gavel and open the hearing portion. And then I'll ask Mr. White to make his public comments. Thank you. The floor is yours, Mr. White. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, I just for clarification purposes, I sent you an email uh, that laid out my concerns about potential environmental problems on the property. I, I recognize that the criteria for a rezone doesn't include that. Um, I simply want to get it on the record and ask you all to postpone approving this. I'm not opposed to the rezone. I, I'm just concerned about what has happened in the past on the property and that if there is environmental contamination due to leaking underground fuel lines, and we know the tanks leaked, a uh, former uh, facilities director and I had a lengthy conversation, it's in my email, 
uh, la a year ago about this uh, when uh, it was in, you know, when Stover's uh, had just announced that they were going to be leaving the area. But um, I just don't want to see the city getting stuck with this. And I wish I would have put this on the record when uh, you all were considering uh, fulfilling your obligations under the lease to sell the property to Stover's. Uh, except I was out of town and all that went down. So, um, again, I, I I just want this on a public record that I do have concerns that at some point in the future, if, if phase one, at least the environmental study isn't done, that a potential uh, future party and or even Stover's themselves at some point uh, might come back to the citizens looking for uh, some assistance in cleaning up um, uh, contaminated soils and other issues. So I really have nothing else to say, but again, I'm Thank not you. opposed to the rezone. So. Thank you, Mr. White, for your comments tonight. I think these are actually some of the same questions that council asked when we executed the, um, when Russell Stover executed their right to buy the property. Um, I think in layman's terms, the city sold them the property as is um, with no further responsibilities um, on that land. Um, I'd ask our city attorney to chime in if if that was too simple of an explanation that um, this now is private property and we cannot require a private property owner to, to perform any kind of environmental tests on their land. The city sold the uh, property to the op occupants of it for many years. Uh, Russell Stover's has the best understanding of what happened or did not happen on the property. Um, and now with the sale, they are uh, taking uh, responsibility for that property. Uh, they wanted to uh, get the property fast, help uh, go through with this, the uh, to execute their uh, option to purchase. Uh, so they were a knowing buyer. And then now it's up to the uh, the buyers that are purchasing the property uh, from Russell Stover's to satisfy their needs uh, or their concerns. So uh, Mr. Harris, uh, do you want to add on behalf of Russell Stover's anything to the, uh, the contamination discussion? Uh, I don't really know that I do. I, I think that uh, um, that well, I, except perhaps other than to say that 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 the relative obligations of Russell Stover as the plant operator for close to four decades in the city as the underlying landowner uh, don't change at all by virtue of this rezoning request. Um, uh, the 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 ground lease um, uh, you know provided for the right of Stover to acquire the property. Uh, we went through the acquisition of the title in, in a cooperative transaction, um, uh, and so and, and so nothing about the fact that we are now going through the steps to position the zoning for complete private property ownership going forward. Um, uh, uh, has any bearing on any underlying environmental considerations. Uh, uh, for, uh, for what it's worth, I would say that uh, I don't believe, uh, you know, in, in, in the 38 year lease period, uh, I don't know that, that, that Russell Stover as the tenant uh, ever got a notification from anyone that there were any issues or there was failure to comply. Uh, I will say that we, from Russell Stover's perspective, uh, it completely abided by its, its obligations to, comp to comply with law for every year of that lease. Uh, the fact that it now has acquired the underlying you know, title from the city uh, really does not change that. And so uh, we, we, we are very respectful of Mr. White's concerns but I can assure the council there is no uh, no person or party uh, with respect to this ordinance uh, more interested at all in the environmental integrity of this property than the current owner. And so uh, with that, I'll sign off and, and uh, 
uh, again, uh, would uh, ask the council to please approve the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as part of this public hearing, I see we have additional hands raised. Um, Sandy Head, um, we've got you unmuted, or there we go. And if you could please introduce yourself and um, provide your public comments. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Sandy Head, Executive Director for Montrose Economic Development Corporation. Uh, I live at 58784 Spring Creek Road, Montrose, Colorado, 81403. I just want to, um, I appreciate council and I have to give a special shout out to Amy Sharp and uh, Scott Murphy. They've been most helpful as we've worked through this process. Uh, as you know, MEDC has been involved with this since uh, January of 2020 when um, Stover's made the announcement that they were going to pull out. Uh, I am a native of Montrose and I am also aware of the uh, contamination that took place a number of years ago. And I think that our concern is that there is substantial awareness, which is going to very severely disincentivize the purchase. Uh, we have the opportunity right now uh, with a, a company that we've worked with since last August who is interested in buying the property. And I know, I don't believe anyone's asking the city to force uh, Russell Stovers to do the phase one. If the zoning can be postponed, uh, at least the first reading, then that gives a little more time to work out the details because environmental uh, research does need to be done. Uh, we have a company that is willing to invest to grow jobs in the, in the community, which I think is a gift considering the size of that building and the fact that we could be sitting here with a white elephant if these issues are not addressed. And what we'd like to do is find a way to postpone the zoning. We are in full agreement to the two zones, I1, B2, but we need more time to work out the details. And in April of 72, 1972, it was the community that borrowed the money personally, individual businesses that bought that property and deeded it to the city. We need to protect our citizens. We need to protect the buyer that is willing to invest in our community and create these jobs. So what we're asking is not that the city force a any sort of duty onto Russell Stovers. We're asking for a postponement of the zoning procedure. And um, those are my comments. I really don't understand how the city works. So I'm not telling you how to do your job. I'm just telling you what our thoughts and desires are. So I do respect uh, all of the hard work each one of you does. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I see Mr. White has his hand up. I'm unsure if it's still up or if he would like to make additional public comments as part of this hearing. So if we could get him unmuted, he could clarify for me. Uh, just just one quick question. Um, was this, what the, the sale, was it handled as a typical real estate transaction with title insurance and all of that? Uh, Mr. Alcorn probably could answer that. Um, I believe Mr. Alcorn could answer that. It, it was uh, transferred as a, on a general warranty deed. There you go. Okay. All okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess just to clarify, the zoning can't remain public. It needs to be rezoned and rezoning it doesn't affect these other issues that we're talking about tonight. I, I'm not, okay. That's, I mean, I'm just trying to understand yes. that part. Okay. That's correct. Um, so we're still in a public hearing. I, I'll look to see if before I close the public hearing, if there are additional public comments. Okay, I'll go ahead and close the public portion of the hearing. Um, I don't think council had comments or questions. I think I asked that already, but if not, now is a good time. This, this Frank. Is for I, either Amy or, or Mr. Alcorn or whoever. Would rezoning this have any bearing on the, the current property owner's obligation to reveal any potential contamination to a future buyer? 
No, and I, I'm a little frustrated because I just don't think that there, this is a proper use of the zoning procedure because it seems like uh, that um, they're trying to use it uh, at, to pressure Russell Stovers in the sale or to pressure them, uh, and that's not what a zoning is for. As the mayor pointed out, that we have a improperly zoned piece of property um, and that it needs to be corrected. Uh, and if the uh, the buyer wants to delay the purchase of the property, more power to them, uh, but that's not an appropriate use of uh, the powers of the city and zoning uh, to try and force some accommodation by a selling party. And, and Mr. Harris is represents the owner of the private property and Mr. Harris, you are requesting that we rezone this property. Correct? Well, do you know what? We can see you, but not hear you. Uh, y yes, we are. We, y yes, we, yes, sir, we are, we are, Madam Mayor. Um, we, we, uh, and I concur, uh, concur completely with, with Mr. Alcorn's comments that, that he just made. Thank you. Great. Thank you. One of the benefits of Zoom, there are a lot of downsides, but one benefit is that we can have you participate with our council meeting all the way from Tennessee. So thank you. Um, I see that <laughs> you, um, Ms. <laughs> Ms. Head has her hand up again. Um, and so I will ask our behind the scenes folks to allow her to speak. That's not within my powers here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Welcome back, Sandy Head. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It wasn't to uh, engage in uh, back and forth. I just wanted to clarify why I brought this up at this section, because I would have done it at the call to the public. That may have been more appropriate. But since Russell Stovers was on the agenda, I thought that it needed to wait till now. So I just wanted to apologize if I was out of order. That was not P intent. Thank you. Yeah, no, no worries. This is a, this would be a great time to, to bring it up and we appreciate your public comment. Are there, is there anyone else wishing to comment before we close the hearing? Okay, I don't see anyone. So officially I'm gonna close the hearing on this first reading of an ordinance. I'll go back to council for a motion Mayor, I move to pass ordinance 2531 on first reading as presented. I'll second that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion from council on this motion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum? Aye. Doug Glassbell? Aye. Ray Anderson? Aye. Dave Bowman? Yes. Dave Frank? Aye. Mayor Biden, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item on our agenda is item 11, which is ordinance 2529, second reading. This is council consideration of an ordinance vacating a right of way deemed surplus South First Street Public Safety Complex. And we're joined tonight by our public works manager, Jim Scheid. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, yes, this is a vacation of right of way on South First Street. Uh, we have talked about it at work session and one previous council meeting. Um, um, but this is in relation to the construction of the new police department building on South First Street. So the vacation would be the southern piece of South First that is um, immediately in front of the um, new police department location. And, and there are maps included in the packet to help clarify that, but um, nothing else has changed on this since we spoke last, um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that may have come up. Thank you very much. Any questions from council or our youth counselor on this item? And this is a second reading, so we do accept public comment. It just isn't a hearing. I, if I had a gavel, you'd notice the difference more, but anyway. Public comment on this item. I don't see anyone wishing to make public comment on the second reading of this ordinance. So I'll come back to council for a motion. 
Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2529 on first reading as presented. I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion. This is second reading. This is second reading. Second reading. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Glassbell, and I heard the second from Councillor Anderson first, so I'll make that call. <laughs> and now we'll do a vote. Barbara Bynum? Aye. Doug Glassbell? Aye. Roy Anderson? Aye. Dave Bowman? Yes. Dave Frank? Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda tonight is the item number 12, which is North 9th Sidewalk Extension Contract Award. And this is council consideration of an award for a construction contract to Ridgeway Valley Enterprises in the amount of $89,062.60 for construction of the North 9th Sidewalk Extension Project. And I will turn this over to City Engineer Scott Murphy for more information. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so this is kind of one of two for the La Raza neighborhood. Uh, so uh, throughout the years, we've talked about uh, improving sidewalk connections. I mean, overall, I mean, we want to do it everywhere in town, um, find out where to prioritize those. Um, with the completion of the Connect Trail, some of the work in Colorado Outdoors, um, some of the outreach efforts with the uh, La Raza neighborhood and then a neighborhood walk in October, um, we decided the first place to focus these efforts would be on North 9th Street um, to add sidewalks between the existing roundabout at Grand Avenue um, and then running for two blocks east, which I will screen share a map here. Uh, you guys see that? Okay. Awesome. So uh, when they built this roundabout, because it was there were no sidewalks to connect to, there wasn't a crosswalk on this leg. So this product will add a refuge island and a crosswalk here, um, and then detached crosswalks or detached sidewalks going down um, these two blocks um, connects to an existing sidewalk there. You know, long term we want to get this to Northside School, um, but there's some challenges at at Townsend that right now um, this is the lowest hanging fruit to at least get this connection made. Um, this was put out or designed in house, relatively small project. Um, so these things are relatively easy for us to absorb in house. Um, designed in house, put out to bid in January. Uh, the low bidder, we got one, two, three, four, five, six bidders. The low bidder was Ridgeway Valley Enterprises here out of Montrose. Um, so local won't change the outcome. And in this case, uh, the bid is at 89,000. Um, so we'd recommend contract award in that amount. Um, there's no need for any uh, survey. Um, or engineering support, uh, given that uh, this was designed in house, so we can lay it out ourselves um, with our crews. Uh, the project will, um, for construction of this crosswalk here, uh, the project will have um, some closures of this leg of the roundabout. Um, the remaining legs, uh, the remaining other three legs, will remain open during that construction. Um, so expect some detours around this area, um, but otherwise, all work. The road's wide enough that all work can take place on the shoulders with with limited um, disruption to traffic. Uh, the project is scheduled to start um, if authorized right away, uh, or be authorized right away, and then the contractor has until June of this year to uh, complete the work. Um, this project was uh, kind of the scope of this project came into focus after a while budget season was well underway. Um, so at that time. Uh, it wasn't formally included in the budget. I uh, figured it was easier to do as a supplement. Um, so by authorizing uh, this, it's acknowledged that uh, this would be part of a future budget supplement if necessary um, later on. Um, and with that, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from council, including our youth counselor for Mr. Murphy? Councilor Anderson? Yeah, not so much a question as just a comment. I think that the goal is um, really important that we want to get all the way to um, the grade school there, but acknowledging how difficult it is at the same time doesn't mean you don't do anything. And I think this is a great first step. And I applaud you for the design work and what you've done to put this together. 
So I just wanted to say how important I think this first phase is. <clears throat> Thank you. I like that council had a chance to walk this area with neighborhood residents and really talk to them about whether um, two blocks of sidewalks and a crosswalk and a roundabout would be beneficial if they wanted to see that and where it would go and where it would end. And I really appreciate the neighborhood um, being part of that decision. Okay, I will go to public comment um, on this item. I don't see anyone raising their hand, so I'll come back to city council for a motion on this contract award. Mayor, I'll make a motion to award a construction contract to Midway Valley Enterprises in the amount of $89,062.60 for the construction of North 9th Sidewalk Extension Project as presented. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, and now we'll do a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum. Aye. Doug Glassfell. Aye. Roy Anderson. Aye. Dave Bowman. I think you're muted, Mr. Bowman. Sorry about that, yes. And Dave Frank. Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have unanimous vote. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda tonight is number 13, and this is the La Raza Sports Court Project Contract Award, Council consideration of a contract um, in the, um, in, to Kuboski Construction in the amount of 1,006, I'm sorry, $106,726 for the La Raza Sports Court Project. This also came out of our neighborhood walk and discussion. And um, I will turn it over to our public works manager, Jim Scheid. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. And yeah, you're right. This this actually was generated at uh, some of those same community meetings and discussions. Um, and this is uh, in La Raza Park, uh, which is in that same area as the North Ninth sidewalk. Um, and we had um, several items that we discussed in that park, but probably um, the item needing the most attention is that basketball court. It's it's been in. Um, poor shape for a long time. Um, and so that was an area we focused on and we did a, uh, a design in-house as well to uh, come up with an easy and quick solution. Um, and so this would, this project would include um, a new um, court with a, uh, an outdoor surface on it, new hoops um, at the basketball court, um, new benches and solar lights um, around the area, including some of the, the trail that connects the restroom there to the pavilion. And, and then a couple small sidewalk connections. Um, and so we also issued this RFP about the same time as the, um, the sidewalk project. Uh, we received five bids on this one. Um, and in this case, Kaboski uh, was the, um, the lowest bidder, which is a local contractor that we've worked with before and have had a great uh, working experience with them. And uh, we're looking forward to working with them again on this one. Um, and then this would be the same uh, financial situation as um, the sidewalk project in that um, this, this was not specifically budgeted, but uh, would be um, likely part of a supplemental budget later in the year. Thank you. Any comments or questions from council or youth council? Okay. Um, I will look to our attendees list to see if anyone has their hand raised for public comment. I do not see any, so um, we could have a motion. Madam Mayor, I'd move to award a construction contract in the amount of $106,726 for the La Raza Sports Court Project as presented. I'll second that. Thank you. We have a first and a second on that motion. So we'll have a roll call vote. Barbara Bynum. Aye. Doug Glassbell. Aye. Marie Anderson. Aye. Dave Bowman. Yes. Dave Frank. Aye. Mayor Bynum, we have a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. 
that is our last um, action item on our agenda. So now we turn to our staff reports tonight and our first and only official staff report is a sales use and excise tax report from the finance director, Shani Wittenberg. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council. Uh, so let me share my screen and we will get on with this January sales and use tax report. You probably can't see that very well. Is that better? That's great. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. All right. So this is the sales use and excise tax report for January of 2021. The general fund receives 3% of the sales tax that is collected in Montrose. In January, compared to January of 2020, retail sales is up 18.9%. Construction use tax is down 32.9%. Use and auto use tax is up 20.5% with total collections up 15.8% or a positive budget variance of 26% or approximately $330,000 for January. Public safety sales and use tax in January of 2020, we began collecting 0.58%, which is dedicated to public safety. In January, we collected $310,021 or 16.4% more than we did in January of 2020 a positive budget variance of 10.6% or approximately $69,000. Montrose Recreation District tax in June of 2014, we began collecting 0.3% to fund the Community Recreation Center. And in January, we collected $160,350 or 14.7% more than we did in 2020. Excise taxes, we collect 0.9% on hotel stays and 0.8% for eating in restaurants. In January, compared to January of 2020, we're still seeing our hotel excise taxes down 17.3%. Restaurant excise tax is actually up 1.4%, so that's positive. And total collections down 1.1%, a negative budget variance of 0.6%, that's only like $240, $270. So that's that's very good for our excess taxes. Retail sales tax, this is the portion of the vendor's fee that they give up for promotion of um, their businesses in Montrose. And in January, we collected $37,459 or 18.2% more than we did in January of 2020. So with that, I will take any questions you may have and I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you very much. Um, any questions from council or youth counselor about the sales use and excise tax report? It doesn't look like there are any questions. So thank you very much for that presentation. It's very welcome. exciting to see our restaurant tax or restaurant business finally bouncing back a little bit. That's very encouraging. Definitely. Yep. It means our restaurants are busy. You know, our new city employee, Ashley um, P. Tech, offered an interesting perspective when I talked to her about hotel and how busy they had been because before joining the city, she was um, at a local um, hotel doing business. And she said that although we were seeing a reduction in, in sales tax collected, that at least the hotel that she worked at had seen a lot of bookings that were um, tax exempt, a lot of um, government coming through and like the National Guard and whatnot booking rooms. And that was just a great reminder to me that the sales tax is, a, is usually a pretty good indicator of how that sector is doing. But if it's a tax exempt organization, that isn't necessarily the right, um, but you can't read that into that. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, any other staff wish to fill council in on anything? Feel free to raise your hand and join in. Does council have any questions um, for any staff about any projects or anything? 
Josie, do you want to give us a youth city council update what your uh, next project is or how things have been going? Things have been going pretty well. Um, we've just been working on this month that our project is to get out to the to kind of promote ourselves so that we can build a bigger council. And we're just currently working on that using our so social media platforms and um, making videos to try and, you know, convince um, incoming freshmen to join us and um, be a part of what we do. So it's been going pretty well. Great. Thank you. Appreciate the update on Youth Council. Any questions for counselors to for Josie about what Youth Council is doing or working on? Maybe they should make a video for uh, attracting more candidates to our um, planning commission. <laughs> yeah, we certainly can. <laughs> yep. We should think about that ahead of time next year. Um, we do currently have planning commission um, is open and accepting applications through, I believe, March 28th, and more information can be found on the city's website. So we too are trying to encourage folks to, um, to raise their hands and uh, apply. Okay, any um, additional comments from our city council? Anything on anyone's mind that they want to talk about? Today I was driving by the pavilion and it was very exciting to see all of the school kids out there and apparently I drove by during lunch because they were all out there playing football on the lawn and it, it was it was nice to see that our city is able to facilitate them being able to use that building for their schooling. That's very, very exciting. Yeah, that was a great partnership between the city and the school district to accommodate, I believe it's Centennial Middle School while they work on some asbestos mitigation at their location. Okay, I will, um, I'll, my, I'll use my uh, two minutes or less to tell you all that. I think the county has done a great job with vaccinations. Um, the state um, vaccination eligibility chart is updated as of Friday of this week, opening up vaccinations to um, more um, age groups and additional folks based on their jobs. And the county is running a Johnson & Johnson vaccination clinic this Saturday. And you can find out more information if you go to Montrose County's website and look for um, vaccine information. So my hats are off to them. They've been able to vaccinate um, thousands and thousands of our residents here in Montrose and that leads us closer and closer to um, really normal um, opening up and, and having a great summer here in Montrose with, without worrying about the um, pandemic. So my hat's off to Montrose County's vaccination efforts. Anything else anyone want to say before we adjourn this meeting? I don't see anything, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I think we can um, adjourn and we can accept that by acclamation and adjourn our meeting tonight. Thank you everyone who was able to join us. Good night.